Uh, today is the fourth lecture of this uh, semester of this course. It is on hydroelectric power generation. We have seen in last three lectures how power system generation is important, what are the various conventional and non-conventional sources. We have talked in last lecture in detail about thermal power. Now, today is the turn of hydro. Why we should have hydro at all? Motivation. The motivation is we need generation. Our load is always going ahead of generation. So, whatever generation is possible, it is welcome. Now, our potential hydro potential is 80,000 megawatt in the country. In fact, if we can exploit the full potential, there would not be any shortages. You may ask a question then why do not you go ahead and do it? So, so, so as to remove the shortages and do more progress, more industrialization. The point is money. As I told you, you need 4 crores per megawatt. And then there are other problems which I will talk as we proceed in this lecture. The importance of hydro power station is it is multipurpose. It serves various objectives. It can control the flood. It can be used for irrigation. We need water for irrigation. We are primarily an agriculture country. Drinking water is always a problem. In spite of 56 years after independence, we are not yet able to supply potable drinking water to all sections of societies, to all villages. There are still villages where they have to walk quite a long distance to fetch uh, water for just to drink. Navigation. I am sure all of you know in India, it is very limited. Only Bombay to Goa, there are ships which go and then from Calcutta and Madras to Andaman Nicobar. These are the only regular passenger ship service uh, which is uh, I am aware of. Now, another beauty about hydro power plant is it is quick starting unlike thermal power stations where it takes 6 to 8 hours to start. You may ask me question why it is so important to have a quick starting. Well, it is for peak load which suddenly comes and then you, if you are not planned for it, you do not know what to do. You can always start a hydro power plant of appropriate capacity, appropriate unit and in 5 minutes. In fact, the load it takes is 20 megawatt per minute. It is having a negligible running cost as the fuel which is water in this case is free. There is no charges for water. Well, let me also remind you it is the oldest and cheapest method of power generation. Even as I told you in my introductory lectures, the first power plant that was installed in the country were hydro stations, almost simultaneously in Darjeeling and in Sharavati river in Karnataka of 30 megawatt capacity. The, you cannot have all pluses in anything in life, there is always plus and minus. The minus thing here is, it is a high capital cost and the land per megawatt is largest in this case the land requirement. The minimum is nuclear, you hardly need any land. Heavy civil engineering construction, dam, reservoir and so on. The gestation period is very high, it takes 5 to 8 years. In India, it may take 10 years. There are power plants which have not been yet completed even more than 10 years the Gujarat, the of the dam, the uh, in UP or Uttaranchal, you know, uh, Pori Garwal, still there are issues. The whole emerge, uh, village gets submerged, where do you replace the population, give them alternative sites, which they have not yet done uh, in few cases. Well, let me explain the working by a simple block diagram given in the figure.
the figure is self explanatory it is a typical layout for a storage type hydro plant as you will see in the next slide there are different types of hydro power plants now we are more concerned about large power station so it is storage type why storage you can control the output this is a spillway this is head works this is a reservoir uh, this is surge chamber wall house pen stock this is pen stock this is power house this is tail respond and power is generated this is tunnel i'm sure you can go to bhakra also as a visit and see that is our first big hydro power plant built in independent india in 1956 and our first prime minister late pandit nehru called it modern temple as indeed he called iits also these are the modern uh, temples what is a head head is a difference the vertical difference that is between the upper reservoir and the tail race that's called head it's a very important factor when you want to calculate the uh, power generation by hydro power plant as i was just talking to you different types of hydro power plant what are the different types there are three main types of hydro power plant in the world run of the river i'm sure you must have heard these things might have read also in your undergraduate pondage and reservoir you have just talked about the reservoir what is run of the river use water as it comes no harm you have a grid generate whatever power you can feed it to grid it's always welcome pondage is a medium head water comes all the time but you can't store it so it is called pondage hydro power station and reservoir is of course a high head storage like your bhakra dvd system you know and there are so many others in the country what is the highest capacity hydro power plant in the world it's in brazil 12000 megawatt our biggest is bhakra still there is the east wing 600 megawatt west wing 600 megawatt it's 1200 megawatt and since then we have not built another bhakra maybe we are having shortage of money or whatever what are the other types of hydro power plants cascaded as the name indicates cascaded also called series in this figure you can see the upstream power plant is number 1 downstream is number 2 what's the advantage the outflow of number 1 plant becomes inflow to the second and why not use the same water again and generate power now we do have such series hydro power plants in himachal pradesh jammu and kashmir uttaranchal and north east is full of water potential well uh, ladies and gentlemen there are two countries in the world where the hydro potential is tremendous norway and sweden even japan australia 25% in state of tasmania i don't know how many of you are familiar with australia's geography uh, you know like lanka we they have a tasmania state uh, away from the mainland the hobart being the capital if you are followers of cricket you must have seen that some test matches do take place in hobart which is closest to new zealand now this cascaded power plants if you model it naturally if you go for you are an mtech students and if you take a project in hydro power plant the operation of hydro power plant and it's a interdisciplinary project mechanical engineers civil engineers water resources engineering 
energy engineering, environment engineering, so many uh, can work in this area. So, here you have to bring in a tau time delay. Water which starts from plant 1 does not reach instantaneously to plant 2. It takes certain time and that time delay tau, tau you are all familiar, time constant or whatever, uh, that, that time delay is there. It can be a you know, few days, few hours depending on the actual physical difference between the two power plants. Now, let us come to the another type of hydropower plants and they are called tidal power plants. All of you must have seen tides at least in movies and uh, TV serials and whenever you have visited Bombay, Madras, Calcutta. We do not have a sea in Delhi, but uh, we know tides. Now, they have certain height. So, why not use that potential energy and generate power? See, wherever possible, the job of energy engineer that you are going to become, right, is to generate power in as much minimum rupees per hour possible, producing as much minimum pollution or emission as you can and making it as reliable as you can. These are the three golden rules that a energy engineer has to follow while generating power, minimum cost, minimum pollution and good reliability, maximum reliability. I know it is an ideal situation. If you can have all the three, nothing like that, otherwise a combination. There are two important sites in our country called Bhavnagar. Gujarat has been in news for right reasons or wrong reasons and you all of you know about Gujarat, Navalakhi in Kutch area. And second important site is in West Bengal, Diamond Harbour and that is Ganga Sagar. Of course, so far we are not able to generate power, it is still in making. I am sure soon these power plants will be completed and you will start getting power out of them. Well, you may ask me question like I said 12,000 megawatt in Brazil is the biggest hydro power plant. You may as well ask me what is the biggest tidal power plant in the world. This data is very important while appearing in interviews and IS and engineering services or whatever CAT, MAT or I do not know how many exams you may like to give in future. France is a country where on the river Larang, the tidal height is 30 feet or 9.2 meters and flow is 18,000 cumex meter cube per second. Earlier the unit was Qsex FPS system, now this SI system it is cumex meter cube per second. Now, we are going for different types of turbines. I am sure you must have read about turbines in your mechanical engineering courses for thermal stations and so must you must have read about turbines in fluid dynamics in civil engineering courses. There are three main types of turbines. Uh, you must have read the velocity triangles and all those uh, problems. I do not know how much of mechanical engineering you are read, how much of civil engineering you are read, but in our days we used to read lot about them. And these three turbines are important, Pelton, Francis and Kaplan. Pelton is suitable for storage, Francis is suitable for bondage and Kaplan is suitable for run of the river. I already talked about rate of taking load that is 20 megawatt per minute. Uh, some 15 minutes back I was talking about this. Why hydro power plant is ideal for peak load? I also answered these questions in the beginning itself. Quick starting, it is quick 5 minutes, 20 megawatt per minute just now you have seen. What is the equation of power generation? using hydro power. 
this is the equation. Nine eighty one is your value of G. Rho is the density of water, thousand kilogram per meter square. What used to be one gram per cc in CGS system, which everybody has forgotten now. It was so nice a value. H is a head in meters. Now this uh, equation you will need while calculating how much power has been generated with a given head because other things are constant. If head varies, the power generation varies. The discharge is another very important factor which decides about power generation and discharge by I mean useful water discharge. There can be discharge through seepage that does not take part in power generation. There can be minimum discharge required to keep turbine running at no load, right? That is not uh, giving you any power, but we need to have certain minimum, you know, to go. Like in a thermal power plant, to keep the steam at a particular temperature and pressure, we have to burn coal so that you can take power as and when you need. You can't start from cold start all the time. As it is, it takes six to eight hours, right? Like you were talking, you are on your bike or in your car, you are talking for a minute to somebody. You normally you don't switch off the engine because you think you have to just go. That is a different matter. You may stand there for half an hour still talking. That is what uh, Indians are known for their, you know. What are the problems with hydropower stations? Silting, ecological damage, that is how this environmentalist, you must have heard about Bhagunas, Baba Amte, Arundhati Roy, all these uh, persons are very annoyed with anyone who talks of hydropower. Do not think nuclear power is the only power where there is a controversy. Even hydropower, that is why the uh, Narabda and this Pori Gadwal hydro stations are not getting finished or not getting over. Seepage, I already talked about the seepage. You must have seen seepage in houses also, especially the old construction. The main problem is displacement of human habitation from areas behind the dam, which will fill up and become a lake. Lake, if it has become lake, how do you stay there? That is what the Pohori village is totally submerged in the water and those guys need an alternative uh, place to continue to live, continue to lead a reasonable good life. Well, so far we were talking about conventional hydropower plant. Since you are a students of energy center and you need to do more about non-conventional energy sources renewable energy sources. Most of your courses are based on that rather than electrical engineering or mechanical engineering. The micro hydro, pico hydro, mini hydro and small hydro become more important than large hydro. Pico hydro is few watts, mini is 1 to 5, uh, sorry micro is less than 1 megawatt. 500 kilowatt, 750 kilowatt, 200 kilowatt and mini is 1 to 5 megawatt and small anything less than 15 megawatt. This is as per UN convention, direct, directives, norms. Our CEA has a different norms, Central Electricity Authority which is right there in RK Puram sector 1 which controls the so many things in power sector. Now we have 5000 megawatt potential of just this mini, micro and small power stations. Again the China has taken a lead over us, they are having uh, much more potential as well as install capacity in this category. 
we also have around 500 megawatt in uh, himachal pradesh here your um, haryana punjab uttaranchal up in fact iit roorkee has two centers where exclusively the work is going on in hydro one is called alternate hydro center and another is called water resources development center i don't know whether you are aware of it they are both run by mnes mnes is uh, ministry of non conventional energy sources some of you may be getting mnes fellowships is there anybody getting are you aware of that okay it's the only ministry full fledged ministry in the world catering to non conventional energy sources where the potential is 5000 whereas install capacity as i said just now 500 just 10% so there is lot to do miles to go and that's why people like you will have a great future now in energy sector and especially with the passage of 2003 electricity energy act you will all be required as auditors energy auditors now energy audit is compulsory and i'm sure you must be having a one credit course on energy audit which is very important if you don't then go and attend in the evening it's a very important course well there is another variety of hydro station it's really multi purpose and multi color it's called pumped storage the only way to store energy in a big way what we are all aware of is battery all of us are aware of storage of energy electric energy in form of battery your calculators your torch anything your radio your television also runs on a battery inverters needs a battery but that's a small storage if you want real big thing 120 megawatt 150 megawatt you have to go for pump storage power plants what are the other ways of storing energy compressed air hydrogen etc etc we'll talk on them on some day otherwise you may read them in some other courses as well there are upper reservoir and lower reservoir like this and you have a reversible set of motor and pump turbine and generator same set works as a motor and pump sometime and turbine and generator so if it is a off load period or light load period when you don't need power say midnight most of the people are sleeping most of the industries are not there because there is no much of uh, manufacturing activity they are closed either they don't have money or there is no requirement there are very few industries which run round the clock so many industries are one shift 9 to 5 or 8 to 4 or whatever so what happens in the night the load requirement is not same even in iit the night time load requirement is much lower than the day time hardly very few people work in labs there are some people computers in hostels um, the other employees most of them sleep in the night time now when is a light load period why not take this water in the lower reservoir to the top reservoir using motor pump set and keep it ready for peak period then use this reservoir as a normal conventional hydro power plant and same motor pump set works as a turbine generator set and you generate a power it's a beautiful arrangement and we have only two or three such power plants in the country one is in nagarjun sagar near hyderabad andhra pradesh another is talchar in orissa this is analogous to similar to parallel to charging and discharging of a battery now a mobile is well known to everybody you keep on charging it so that you can use it next day sms or whatever 
film songs, FM, photographs, whatever you use you want to put it depending on your pocket how much it permits or which scholarship you are having. So, we have 3, 4 in India I have written here, more are required. Well, what we have done, let us summarize in this first half an hour of this lecture. We have learned conventional hydropower plants, micro, mini, small. We have talked about cascaded hydropower plants. We have talked about the storage. Otherwise, energy cannot be stored like water or gas. Open a tap, you get water. Open a knob, you get a gas. So, there is no magic. You have to generate energy as and when you need. So, the only way you can store energy is in a big way is your pump storage power plant. Advantages and disadvantages we have talked multipurpose, quick starting. The disadvantage is a lot of money is required, a lot of land is required, then the, you have to convince the people, there are political implications, there are you know all these environmentalists uh, are there who will oppose, who can sit on a fast and so on. But why it is required? Firstly, we have potential, great potential, 80,000 megawatt. Why not use it? Why not tap it? When you do not have power, you have shortage of power. America can afford not to spoil the rivers, because they have enough oil, enough coal and their uh, demand is not going up, because everything practically in life they are doing using electric energy. So, where the demand can go up? and population is not rising, otherwise they would not have so many immigrants. So, they are in a happier situation, we are not, our install capacity must increase as I said in the very first lecture, it, we need to add another 1 lakh in 10 years. We have added, uh, we have come up to 1 lakh in 56 years and another 10 years we want to add, because we started with 1360 megawatt 1947, now it is 1 lakh 5000 and if you want to add another 1 lakh, you can well imagine how much money is required, how much manpower is required, how many engineers, scientists working in energy environment area will be required and above all money will be required. Why? Why you want to go for hydro? We want to replace thermal as much as possible. That is all is hydrothermal scheduling is all about. This is a very important topic as a MTech project, mini project, major project. Uh, how you should, uh, there is a full literature available on hydrothermal scheduling. How much of hydro we can use, so that we save thermal, we replace thermal. Why? So that we can conserve coal and we have minimum pollution. Because in hydro there is no sulphur, there is no carbon, there is no CO, there is no CO2, there is no SO2, nothing. Now, we come to our next topic, nuclear power plant. This is third and the last type of conventional power plant. We have talked about thermal, we have talked about hydro just now and now we will be talking about nuclear power plant. This is a practical alternative source of large scale electric energy generation. Why it is practical? It is already happening. Why it is alternative? It is alternative to thermal and hydro. If somehow you do not want hydro, if you do not have hydro or if you do not have coal, well nuclear is the only choice. Well in India, even in 2003, we have just 3 percent of nuclear power generation. We want to make it, take it to 10 percent. We want so many things in life, not necessarily we will achieve all of them, but there is no harm in having high aim, not failure, but low aim is crime. You should aim high. So, our aim is 10 percent by 2010 and 10,000 megawatt, which is roughly today around 3,000 megawatt. What, how does the nuclear power story started in India? With a joint vision of Bhava and Nehru. 
they thought why not use nuclear energy for peaceful purposes. Of course, Nehru was not there to see that first power station working, but he did initiate that Tarapur Trombe. Bark is a prestigious institution. But what was wrong with Tarapur? They the fuel they used was or they use is enriched uranium. Right? And India does not have unfortunately this fuel enrich uranium. Anything we do not have, what we do? We import. That is the only way to get it. And import from where? From US. And our relationship with US, ladies and gentlemen, has been Monday, Wednesday, Friday, good, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, bad. So, as and when we used to get, barring that Kennedy era, which lasted, I mean, now situation is different because there is only one superpower. I am talking about that 60s and 70s and 80s, those 30 years. So, if enriched uranium is not there, you cannot generate power using Tarapur. So, what happened? We went to Kota. Kota is well known to all JE people. I am I'm, I'm sure you have not come through JE, but this is your MTech students. But you know that Kota is the larger center in the country to produce and get success in JE. Kota is also the, perhaps the only city having all the three power plants, hydro, thermal as well as nuclear. This is always asked in uh, interviews. So, Kota used that heavy water reactors and it was with the Canadian help. There have been problems there also, there have been leakage on heavy water etcetera, it has made headlines in past in newspapers. The third one is truly Indian, be Indian, by Indian, Kalpakam. It is close to Chennai, formerly Madras. It has a research station as well, where the research is going on on fast breeder technology. Fourth is Narora near Aligarh, UP, and fifth is Kakrapar. It is Gujarat, then the Kaigada in uh, Karnataka, and so on. Ten such places have been identified. And let us hope over this dream of 2010, 10 percent will be fulfilled because of all this nuclear power station coming up. Let us explain briefly how does it generate power. U 35, the uranium you know atoms, they are bombarded with neutrons creating fission process, which also generates neutrons and further these neutrons can be used, it is a regenerative process. That is why the fuel required is very little and it generates heat energy and hereafter you know what to do with the heat energy, produce steam at particular temperature and pressure turbine, generator, transformer, grid, power is available. Release neutrons, there is a chain reaction as I was talking just now. So, more fission, but can you control speed? Yes, we need to reduce speed to a critical value. How do you achieve that? By using certain agents. What are these agents? Graphite, heavy water and they are called moderators. You must have seen on TV or anywhere, any panel discussion, there is a moderator. So, that you, you remain within the subject, you do not talk something which is irrelevant to that day to that topic. So, here is a moderator which sees that the speed does not go beyond certain critical value. What do you, how do you control? For reaction control, control rods made of neutron absorbing material are inserted in the reaction vessel. 
which is equivalent of boiler here. There is no boiler here. And boron steel is one such material which absorbs extra neutron. So, that the speed gets limited to a desired critical value. It would not allow it to pass or surpass or cross certain value. However, control is possible only within narrow range. It is not possible to have minus infinity to plus infinity like you want voltage to remain within plus minus 5 percent. That is a different issue in India it becomes minus plus minus infinity. The voltage can go as low as 170 volt, it can go as high as 270 volt, a 60 watt bulb can behave like 100 watt in the night when the voltage is very high or 25 watt in the daytime peak hour. That is a separate story and that is why you need a voltage stabilizer for whatever damn thing you want to use whether it is a AC, whether it is a fridge, whether it is your PC, you need another investment of 3 to 5 thousand in India a poor country because you are not able to control your voltage, it is free for all. But normally it is supposed to vary between plus minus 5 percent. So, here also the control is possible only within a narrow range. What is the consequence of this? The consequence is nuclear power station can only be used as a base load station because variation is not possible. If it is generating 500 megawatt, it is generating 500 megawatt all the time. So, in order to use that 500 megawatt, I have shown that curve if you recall on very first day, this is the portion base load which will be supplied by the nuclear power station. You have any anyway other alternatives for peaking, peak load, gas station, hydro station, depending on how big is the peak or peak shaving techniques are also there. I have given you 5 golden rules, how to flatten the load curve and make the uh, you know load factor as close to 1 as possible. The ideal thing is step curve U of t, whose Laplace is 1 by s you must have read it in your control systems or mathematics or whatever. I will show you the figure unfortunately, they have to make it enlarge. I hope they will do that. Somehow I could, I forgot to make it big one, otherwise I will bring it next time. This is a reactor. Now, there are control rods. I do not know whether you can see it and this control rods are embedded in this reactor vessel and these are the fuel rods and coolant goes from here and comes back. This is the heat exchanger and the steam, the water becomes steam because of this heat and steam enters in turbine here and goes here to generator and here is a condenser similar to thermal power plant. Most part of is is similar to thermal power station except the boiler part which is a reaction a reactor here, a reaction takes place in this vessel. So, this is a schematic view of a nuclear power plant. Now, this heat with nuclear reaction, heat exchanger via primary coolant, what are the coolants we use in nuclear power station? Either CO2 or water. Then there is a steam which goes and produces electric energy in a normal conventional way. There is advanced gas reactor and boiled water reactor, there are different types of reactors. 
I suggest and request you to go through the, the textbook and read in detail about this various reactors in case it interests you. Heavy water moderated reactor is also there. So, there are several types of reactor and you can choose depending on the need. There is a CANDU reactor also, C A N D U, Canadian design. It uses natural uranium in oxide form. Pressurized heavy water moderated uh, is used for more as a moderator. I told you already what is moderator. What are the merits of a nuclear power station? It is totally devoid of any air pollution. There is no air pollution, no CO2 gets into the sky, into the environment, no NOx, nothing. Very little fuel is required by volume as well as by weight. Therefore, poses no transportation problem. You do not need railways, you do not need wagons. Okay not money spent in transportation of a fuel. Land per megawatt is very small and hence there are no siting problem. You can have a flexible siting. If it is a thermal power plant, you have to see it is not close to cities because of pollution or it should be close to mines, pithead power plants, Singroli. Korba, Chandrapur and so on. But nuclear power station siting is totally independent of all these considerations, can be anywhere. But as I told you ladies and gentlemen, there cannot be only merits. There have got to be certain demerits in whatever plant you are talking. So, what are the problems? or demerits of this uh, nuclear power station. The biggest one which we always talk is radioactive fuel waste disposal. It is a serious environmental hazards and it is said even when the nuclear power station has stopped working you have declared it that it is cannot be used anymore in spite of using your all Jugar technology etcetera, the Indian technology it is not working. Even then you have to guard it for another large number of years. If there is a radioactive leakage as it indeed happened in case of uh, Three Mile Island in 60s or Cherbinel in 86, that was 70s, Chervinavali was 86, USSR, former USSR, Three Mile Island was in US. The whole Europe was affected and you have to guard against that. Not that there are no accidents when you walk, have you stopped walking? Not that there are no railway accidents, in fact they have produced a sort of record in the last two years. Still, we do not get tickets if you go to you know or some Calcutta, Bombay, tickets are not available in good trains, in fast trains, in Rajdhanis. People do travel in air, though there have been a, a sabotage or there have been a, you know hostages or the terrorist attack or whatever, bird hit or tires not opening, several faults can develop and still people do travel in air. So, just because there have been two major accidents in last century does not mean we should not use nuclear power station. What is important is you have to be careful. In life you have to be always careful. There is a danger if loss of coolant is in, it will be in an accident you can have a loss of coolant. Of course, that is also a sort of a demerit that it can only be used as a base plant. But in a grid operation, in interconnected operation, that is not a demerit in a sense. 
there is another FBR technology coming being developed in the country fast feeder reactor where you can use thorium as a fuel. We have the largest deposits of thorium in the world 45,000 tons. Where is this thorium available? Anybody? Anybody knows? It is in Kerala and Orissa, in the sand dunes of Kerala and Orissa. Instead of heavy water, now they are trying to use light water technology, which is cheaper and better. The progress will always go on, will always get better and better technology. What is fusion? So far we have been talking about fission, like network analysis and network synthesis. So, fusion is futuristic. Why futuristic? Today, there is no nuclear power plant based on fusion principle. In fact, in 1989, April issue of a Time magazine, which is a very famous magazine, two American scientists claim that they have achieved fusion, but later on proved, out, proved to be a cold one. Something similar to our Ramar Pillay who said he can have petrol from water and later on he was behind the bars because he could not prove it. Generation of power as and when possible will solve all the long term energy needs of the world if fusion becomes a success with hardly any environmental problems. Who knows one day before 69 July 23rd, who knew that we are going to go on moon? and the human being does walk on the moon on 23rd uh, July of 1969, Neil Armstrong and his one colleague and one fellow was watching very closely sitting in the plane or whatever that space van. So, one day if you say if it begins success, you do not need anything, then there is an infinite energy available, you can use it. The main problem is how to control fusion at that temperature. So, that is where the scientists are working and who knows fusion reactor may be available by 2010 or any day. I already talked about this 3 mile accident in 70s in US and Chernobyl in former USSR in 86, yet there are two countries in the world, France and Canada having a clean record. In fact, France two third of the power generated is by nuclear and there have been no Chernobyl, no three mile island, no accident. France is currently in use because of heat wave, which normally we have in India. Several thousand people have already got affected, several have died also. Now, there is a need to do more research and development in standardizing the design, construction and operation of nuclear power plants. Why? We cannot afford to have each nuclear power plant on different design, US, Canada, France, you know. So, there is need to have an Indian standard design, construction and operation. So, that uh, the spare parts required are minimal, we can order, they become cheaper. If there is a larger demand, anything will become cheap, if there is a demand is more. If demand is less, then naturally it will be costly or if it is not made in house in India, if you to export it or sorry import it, naturally it will be costlier. And who knows we can export them also, India has been exporting 
power plants, uh, BHEL has been doing that, NTPC is also doing that, consultancy and all those things, using information technology, etcetera. So, with this I think today we will finish. What we have done, let us uh, um, recapitulate. We have talked about the remaining two conventional plants, namely uh, hydro and nuclear. And next lecture that is on Friday, uh, we will be talking on MHD, geothermal, that is the now the non conventional sources will start, which are equally important especially in far off regions, hilly areas, inaccessible areas, where the grid has not reached. In India, grid has not reached everywhere. All villages have not yet been electrified. Only 85 percent have been electrified. So, those 15 percent villages, the only hope is renewable energy sources. Well, now there is a, some time left for question answers. If you have any on any past lectures, I hope you have solved those five problems which I gave you earlier on. It is there in the brown book and not in the blue book as I said. So, any questions on today's lecture? Anyone? Any clarification, any suggestion, any doubt? If not, then we will close.